The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we will give a few more minutes for other people to join, but we're going to start um, right now. Uh, thank you for joining today's webinar, Maintaining Work-Life Balance While Working From Home. My name is Enya Ren, and I'm the Manager for Market Support and Programs at BCCIE. Our presenter today is Christina Furtado from Toronto. She is a mental health and wellness specialist with Keep Me Safe program by GuardMe. Um, before we get started to the content, we would like to acknowledge that at BCCIE, we live and work on the unceded traditional territories of the Coastalish peoples of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations. We acknowledge the land we are meeting on is a traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. Um, some housekeeping information for you. We will be having a Q&A session at the end, but uh, throughout the, the webinar, if you have any questions, please feel free to um, type into the question box in your GoToWebinar control panel. Again, it's at the very bottom. Um, and I'll bring them up throughout the presentation and during the Q&A session at the end. Um, the presentation and handouts uh, can be downloaded from the can control panel. Uh, you should be able to see that there are two handouts, so feel free to go ahead and download them. Mm, we will also be sharing the recording on our website after the presentation as well for you to review later. Um, please also use the question um, chat box to request any technical assistance if you are experiencing any. A uh, quick info on where our audience is from. Uh, we have people registered from the K-12 language sector and a few colleagues from post-secondary institutions in BC and uh, uh, out of province. We also um, have some international colleagues joining us from Mexico, the US, and uh, Netherlands. So welcome everyone. And now without further ado, I will turn the time over to Christina. Christina, thank you so much again for joining us from Toronto. Thank you so very much. And, and obviously, um, we all find ourselves in a very difficult time. So in order to sort of highlight who will be speaking to you, um, I'm going to sort of show myself temporarily. Hello, everyone. Welcome to my home. Um, and thank you for bringing me into yours. So before we get into the slides, the one thing that um, I want to do is, again, thank you all for completing that survey with regards to the various concerns and strategies um, you're hoping to, to gain from today together, and I'm hoping that we can address most of them. Now, we all find ourselves, given um, the current situation that we've been thrown into, uh, that our mental wellness and the mental wellness of not only our family, our friends, but more importantly, our students have been challenged to a point of uncomfortability. And what we need to acknowledge and sort of have an appreciation for is that our mental wellness falls on a spectrum. It's a continuum. We're never really static in one particular state of being. And as situations unfold, as we experience different um, activating events, our mental wellness is challenged and we sort of fall along that spectrum. So during times of pandemic, it is definitely a normal response for increased stress and anxiety to be experienced. And it sort of segues and sort of transitions us from that light green, which is more of, you know, a thriving state of mental state, which is, is more of our healthy balance. So normal mood fluctuations in control of our mental abilities with few sleep disturbances. And we just sort of take things in stride. But during times of high anxiety and stress, which is really what we're all experiencing right now, including our students, including our homestay um, and our family and friends, we've now found that that stress sort of has triggered us into more of the yellow or orange, which is an unsettled um, or struggling state of being. And if we sort of look at our mental health and our physical health, we look at the orange as more of, of being injured. There, there's cues that 
our response system is giving us that we need to take action. And that's really what stress is. So stress is a total response to environmental demands or pressures that disrupt one's balance, one's equilibrium. And part of that balance is the routine and rhythm that we adopt based on our responsibilities, not only in work life, but also in our home life and personal lives. So any demand placed on our brain or physical health is a result of stress levels increasing. Stress is also fear. And when we are talking about fear, that is the anxiety aspect. However, it's the stress is more fear of not meeting expectations. And we're going to talk a bit about that throughout the time together today in that those expectations, while they might be set by ourselves, um, they might have been dictated by our previous routine and responsibilities. They're also fear of not meeting the expectations that others have of us. So whether it be of us from a personal level, um, from being a colleague, so to the institutions, to our homestays, it's fear of not meeting those expectations that also have contributed and will continue to contribute to those increased levels of stress. Anxiety is that feeling. So the feeling of fear, the feeling of worry, of uneasiness, and it's really the reaction to the stress, whether the stress is identified or unidentified. So that sort of brings us to a more basic understanding of what stress and anxiety is on a normal day-to-day -day experience. Anxiety levels and stress sort of help us manage and cope through life stressors that are thrown our way. And when we are faced with uncertainty, which is really what has happened due to COVID-19, um, our coping mechanisms are challenged. They're really sort of stretched to the brink and some of them will be accessible to us. Some will be useful to us and others um, really will not rise to the occasion in getting us through this difficult time. So part of that mental wellness in not only providing ourselves support as a primary focus, but it will also help us in assisting our students um, and assisting our colleagues is to boost our overall coping mechanisms to improve our overall well-being. And that's really ideally what I'm hoping that we achieve today is sort of planting the seed of growth. So it's normal for us to have feelings like anger, sadness, um, worrisome during stressors that we are faced in experiences of challenge. And it's fair enough to assume and have the appreciation that others are also and equally express experiencing those same challenges. When we are looking at um, how we are coping and how we want to help others cope as well, we need to be mindful of what our automatic pilot is. And what that means is, you know, mental health is how our bodies are. Mental health, pardon me, is how our minds are. So that's our thoughts, our feelings, and our behaviors. And our thoughts are very much um, our perception of the situation at hand. And they create very specific feelings. Um, those feelings, while again, sort of speak to the perception, which is our truth, are very intimate and very private and very specific to our experience and our thoughts of the situation. And they create specific behaviors. Those behaviors reinforce the thoughts. And what tends to happen in, in high level situations where routine and rhythm are sort of thrown off kilter is we can choose to be reactive in our behavior, or we can choose to be responsive. And given that we were sort of thrown into the mix of colliding work life and home life and have thrown that off balance, we haven't been given the proper um, foundation in order to plan how we are going to respond. And that can be very stressful for us, but more importantly, stressful for the people that we feel responsible for, and that's our students and our homestay families. So fear is stress in this particular situation. So when we are faced with increased levels of stress, it does affect our thoughts, it affects our feelings, and how we see the world. And it really decreases our ability to cope with those challenges. So we need sort of an empathetic pathway in order to appreciate that not only are we ourselves experiencing it in our own lives, 
but those that we have direct relationship and interaction with and responsibilities towards are also feeling the same. So fear has a purpose. Stress has a purpose. And when we need to identify and accept and recognize what that purpose is, it serves us really to be alert and to take action to protect ourselves from possible loss. And this sort of takes us into one of the, the main and, and foremost um, strategies that need to be involved in lessening our stress and the stress of others is talking. Uh, so talking can be a way to cope with the problem that we've been carrying around in our head for a while. And you've noticed that I've really made a point of saying that it's what we're carrying in our heads because it is that thought process, whether it be negative, whether it be those spiraling what ifs as to the uncertainty of what's to come. It is our thought process and what those thoughts are that sort of keep us trapped in that automatic pilot and doesn't allow us to be responsive in our behavior. It really fuels and intensifies our reactions. Now, high levels of stress are very similar to experiences with regards to grief. And here I've sort of captured what the stages of stress were or are, pardon me, and what the grief cycle is with regards to experiences at a loss. Now, grief is a very normal internal feeling when one experiences a loss in their life. And I've already introduced that stress and anxiety are equally as normal of a response to day-to-day -day stressors. So when we're looking at the, the relationship between the two, we can really see how someone's emotions can be um, a roller coaster, frankly, during times of pandemic when that level of uncertainty and lack of control and ability to understand what is happening and why it's happening can really mask and, and mirror very similar responses to that of the grief cycle. So we've got, you know, stage one and two of stress, which is that buildup. So symptoms are very subtle. So we knew that the situation with regards to the virus was happening in other parts of the world. And yet, because it wasn't on our homeland and wasn't directly impacting us on a day to day, we just had more of um, empathetic um, and, and sympathy towards those across the waters experiencing this distress. Um, so we sort of avoided and, and possibly denied that we ourselves could be impacted by the COVID-19 situation. And then, of course, I'm not going to necessarily speak to at great length um, about the various strategies or stages of each of those stress levels as well as grief levels. And though we can see that Feelings are going to change. Um, experiences from each individual is going to change based on where they are at with regards to their own management of stress. So part of our responsibility to family, friends, colleagues, and our students and families um, of those students is to maintain our own well-being in order to be that supportive um, anchor and even um, source of information at some point in time when we ourselves gain more information so we can fulfill our obligation to them. We ultimately, through managing stress and anxiety, similar to that in the grief session, is with regards to our own sense of overwhelm um, and our need to get to succumbing to that symptom, sort of embracing that we are in a time that is unique in a time that is disruptive for all. So we need to accept and explore the new plan, the new way of adapting to what our new normal is going to be. So to achieve that, um, and we need to work towards it and sort of look at um, our basic means of taking on and taking charge of stress on day-to-day -day levels. And then seeing how those same um, A's that I'm introducing you to can be applied to or not applied to our current situation um, as a result of the COVID-19 outcome. So the first A is with regards to alter. Um, so what we want to try to achieve is with regards to removing the source of stress by changing something. Now we can't necessarily change um, the COVID-19 
outcome or what the Ministry of Education dictate or even what institutions are dictating for students or for ourselves or for the industry, what we can do is alter our behavior. So the first step of changing behavior is to understand what is actually maintaining the behavior in the first place. So I highlighted before and I will continuously highlight throughout the time that we have is that our own perspective and our own mental well-being is going to be key to us facil facilitating um, different strategies and supporting our students and families during this time. The second A is with regards to avoidance. So we can remove ourselves from the stress stressful situation. Now, again, this is not something that we can actually do right now. And though we can figure out a way of how we can let go of some of those stressors. So there are aspects that we are able to control and there's aspects that we're not able to control. And every day um, in both our personal and professional lives, we face challenges. We face decisions and we face situations that cause our stress levels to increase. The ability to stay, step back and take a different view is crucial skill at this time. It's a crucial, it's a crucial and, and very critical skill for us to really master. Carrying negative viewpoints does drain our energy. It does distract us from what we are able to, to do and move forward and achieve. And it weighs us down both mentally and physically. So the last A that we have on the screen, I really see as a critical tipping point for us to better manage our own well-being as well as manage and support um, everyone else that we come in contact with, whether it be personally or professionally. And that is acceptance. We need to accept the situation is stressful and supply ourselves with various tools and strategies so, so that we can deal with it. And part of that is working to change our perception. Perception is influenced by a number of factors. So perceptions are influenced by experience, by personal values, judgments, information, as well as the lack of information. It's also our needs and our desires. So is it possible to expand our perception? 100% it is, and that's really what we need to do. When we're dealing with uncertainty and when we're dealing with aspects that are completely out of our control, our perception of that situation, of our events and our behaviors will change and potentially change the outcome of ourselves and others. So I encourage you to look at a perspective shift. So per perception is reality. It's our reality. And while our perception may differ from someone else's, that is their reality. How we see something becomes our truth and which can sometimes be self-limiting. And what we're seeing amongst our student population, amongst even yourselves in the room, there's a lot of aspects of unknown that have contributed to things escalating and just not knowing what to do or what next steps could potentially be. Shifting perspectives is like tricking the mind. We want to flip the script. So I've introduced to you early on that sort of automatic pilot. And while we can't necessarily know what the automatic pilot is for someone else, if we're able to identify what ours specifically are, then we can help sort of be mindful of what our behaviors are to other individuals in their automatic pilot. So to trick the mind and flip the script, what we can do is, you know, follow these four steps. The first one being briefly describe the the situation. So what is the situation that is actually causing the worry? And these are steps that you can actually do with others to help them gain a different perspective as well. So what's the situation? Capture the most important details that you can gather. Remember, it's factual details. What are your thoughts? And lay down the foundation of crafting your current perspective statement, which is step two. What is that perspective? Are you worried about your job? Are you worried about um, the financial pressures that this may result in? Are you worried 
about the new normal and maintaining that? Are you worried about parenting and working at home? Are you worried about trying to get students back home that may be stranded here? What exactly is your current perspective on the situation that you are reacting to? Then you wanna develop three to five alternative perspectives. So this is looking at how can we start with something that is at least a shade or two more positive than the current perspective. It's about looking at what is the opportunity that is presented, not what is the opportunity that is taken away. Ask a friend, ask a colleague to help you even in trying to develop those perspectives because sometimes when we're too deep into our spiral, into our automatic pilot, we need that extra um, insight from someone else that can help give us different perspective. Avoid writing about actions that you could take. Those will come later. Step four is with regards to choosing one alternative perspective to use for the next week. You've all got the power. And the one thing that when in high levels of stress and, and similar to a lot of the feedback that I've seen you guys provide with regards to preparation for today's webinar is that some of what you are hoping for are out of your control. There's no answers for them yet. We're trying to figure that out. And together, we need to be creative in how to create a new norm, not only for ourselves, but for everyone else that we interact with. So those prescriptions. Those flip the script alternatives, you know, our brains are really wired um, to look for the negative. It's just how we're made. We look at sort of our existence, rely on what we see as dangers around us so we can be proactive and we can be effective in strategies to protect ourselves from harm. That's how we go about things. So it's quite intuitive, if you will, for our bodies and our minds to go into a fight flight situation during times of pandemic because of that uncertainty. That uncertainty is viewed as danger. So we wanna flip the script to see the positive in things. And that can be very difficult and I do appreciate that for sure, um, especially given this time. But here are some different examples that I see as positives. We look at, opportunity for growth. I see this as an opportunity for personal growth. How can you grow yourself as an individual outside of the identity that you've established within your employment roles or even within your family units? It's an opportunity to be challenged. It's an opportunity to engage in a hobby, to be creative. It's an opportunity to pause or even an opportunity to support others. So I have been introduced to a different perspective more recently that I thought was kind of interesting that I'd like to share and sort of involve you in just to get your perspective on how you can equip yourself on shifting and flipping the script. So it's called the rose check-in. So a rose, we've got the rose itself, we've got the rose bud, we've got the thorn, and then I'm gonna introduce you to the unsure. So we've identified the rose to be something that is going well. So given everything that has happened in the last couple of weeks that has really caused significant disruptions, I want you to think about your rose. What is the something that is going well? And if you are comfortable with sharing, um, I've sort of looked at uh, the list here, and while you don't have mic privileges, I can definitely give you the mic privilege if you put up your hand, um, which is an option. So if you want to share what your rose is or has been um, during this time, I'd love to hear from you. I'll give you a couple minutes. Okay, so I'm going to pick on somebody just because I can. Steve Cameron, how are you? Oh, yeah, I'm going to make sure Steve's okay. I think I have everything here. Um, 
do like groceries and everything Friday because they're paid. So I'll just have him. Okay, so there is the ability to also look at your rosebud. So what is the opportunity that it's presented? So EJ, your mic is now on. What would you consider your rosebud to be during this time? So what is the opportunity that this situation has provided you? Sorry, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think this has given me an opportunity to uh, look at uh, um, new opportunities and ways to reach out to people while um, uh, taking into consideration um, the changing um, scenery and the changes that are coming ahead. Well done. Thank you. And I'm sorry that I put you on the spot, but well done. So the idea is with the rose check-in is similar to, again, that flipping the script opportunity. And that is in any circumstance and any situation that we are faced with, yes, it's go there's going to be a challenge. And though with the determination to not give in to the fear, we can overcome that challenge by looking at various opportunities that it presents itself at the time. So how do we do that? So coping with stress, fear, and uncertainty is, is really what's fueling some of that fear that not only are we experiencing, um, but what individuals that we might be coming into contact, whether it be the students, the homestay families, or even colleagues. So we need to understand our anxiety to help others manage and understand their own. So it is the uncertainty that we need to really look at and also identify, manage what you can and release what you cannot. So this will speak to our ability to really tackle and, and dive into that acceptance and learning to identify what is in my control and what is something I need to let go of. I encourage you as well to sort of stay informed and don't obsessively check the news. Encourage not only yourself, but encourage others to stick to trustworthy sources that do provide fact-based information. While I appreciate that some of that information has also left a lot of unanswered questions, not only for ourselves, but for others, it does provide us a standpoint of what is known in the moment. So we can, again, take that perspective on and figure out what action do I need to take with the information that is unknown that is contributing to my worry or contributing to the worry of others. So limit how often you're checking. Um, introduce, as I call it, the low information diet. So that is pick a specific time of day that you are getting updates, whether it be updates um, as a result of the COVID-19 situation or updates from more of a professional standpoint as to where things stand that way. Be very careful about what you share um, and what you communicate and how you communicate because we all play a role. And the one thing that is known um, within the counseling world, frankly, and, and anywhere else is that emotions are contagious. Um, they can very much, our emotions and our behaviors can have a direct impact on someone else's emotions and behaviors and how they actually react versus respond. So whatever we are modeling in our own lives, whether it be again, professional or personal, we do have an impact on that other individual's automatic pilot. So we need to be very careful about how much we are communicating about our feelings going on. Um, but more importantly, with regards to the information on COVID and everything else that is directly impacted about that to others. If you don't know the answer, you don't know the answer. You don't know what you don't know. And we sometimes feel an obligation to have all the answers because we've had all the answers before. And that was something that was, again, just very much based on the routine, very much based on sort of the monotony 
of everything that we do on a daily basis in our roles. So we took for granted that there are going to be circumstances, there are variables that can and will have a direct impact on what we do. And COVID-19 has really brought to surface that very concept. So I encourage you to focus again on things that you can control. So you can control, you know, your own positive attitude. You can control your own perspective. You can, you know, control and limit your own social media, how you follow the recommendations with regards to social distancing um, and all of those other aspects. What you can't control is someone else's reactions. We can't control how long this is going to last or what's going to happen next. Those are variables that frankly are unknown and we don't wanna give them too much power over our thoughts to control the fear and stress levels. Now it is the case though that um, in some circumstances because of the uncertainty that we are faced with that some planning does need to take place in order to sustain some sort of routine but also some sort of security, um, not only financial, but also just within our, our long-term plans from a career perspective. So it's natural to be concerned about what's going to happen next. Um, the what ifs, if you wanna call them that. Being proactive can help lessen the anxiety and though it's about being proactive until you actually need to execute or take action. Um, it's not about being proactive and being and sitting in those what ifs. It's two very different scenarios that could actually have two very different impacts on you and your mental well-being and how you support others during their time of struggle. So what I'm encouraging you to do here is write down very specific worries that you have about the virus and how it might disrupt your life. So what are those disruptions? And what are the very specific worries as a result of that? If you're starting to feel overwhelmed or if you're doing this with someone else as a means of helping them better manage the anxiety and stress, their sense of overwhelm or escalation of anxiety and intensifying of that, encourage to take a break. When you're better able, you're going to revisit that list and identify possible solutions that you can think of. So this is again a perspective shift. What are the opportunities um, that have presented themselves based on the current situation? Try not to get too hung up on the perfect solution or the perfect option. Perfection does not exist. And when we are moving forward with the ideal that perfection is a possibility, we actually are setting ourselves up for failure. So again, it is that fear of not meeting expectations, but we need to establish um, realistic expectations. And what we are going to learn in a few slides from now is the importance of establishing new expectations, not only for self, um, but for others, whether it be others that are in the home with you um, or those homestay families or those students and colleagues. After you've evaluated your options, you're gonna draw up a plan of action. So those are the steps that you are going to put into place or need to put into place in order to fulfill that solution and alleviate some of that anxiety and worry. When you're done with that, um, set it aside, put it aside, shelf it, and avoid going back to it until you need it or until things significantly change. Now it is very common um, for our what ifs to take a whole new entity and sort of take control and spiral out of control. So it's a very simple technique, very effective, that I'd like to introduce you to with regards to grounding. So we wanna focus on specific things that we can change rather than circumstances beyond our control. And the specific things that we can change is how we ourselves are perceiving the situation and what we are doing to keep ourselves calm. So the five, four, three, two, one is a technique where you focus all of your attention on the here and now. So noticing five things that you see, four things that you hear, three things that you can feel, two things that you can smell, and one thing that you can taste. So we repeat that process over and over again until we find ourselves in a calmer state and in a grounded presence because it allows our rational and balanced brain 
to reconnect and be accessible. So we can, again, identify what is that thought? What is the activating event to that thought? How am I feeling about it? And how is it best for me to respond versus react? Now, during this particular time, you may be overcome with hesitation about certain career decision making that you might need to, to face. And this implies taking some risks. Now, there's, again, a lot of unknown with regards to job security or even um, the security of particular institutions and educational institutions because of what has happened. Um, some institutions rely quite heavily on international students as a means of financial stability um, within their organization. And though this change that we have all faced has really taken us from familiar to unfamiliar quite quickly and without, frankly, any warning. People dislike stability, sorry, desire stability and dislike breaks in routine. So when we are finding ourselves overwhelmed, part of the step forward is to become more flexible enough as well as courageous enough to leave that familiar routine and try something new. You can actually improve your chances of success through sound planning, preparation, and research. As well, you will help to make the unknown more known, which will lessen your fear. Change means giving something up and letting go in order to move forward. Letting go can be quite difficult. It can involve losing some sense of self and some sense of security. So often letting go is the biggest block um, when impacting our careers and, and frankly, when impacting our life. So I remind you that fear has a purpose. So once you accept and recognize it, it serves to alert you to take action to protect yourself from possible loss. So one approach for coping with the fear of change and the uncertainty that we are all potentially facing is to imagine the worst possible result of your decision, which is also very frightening. And it can happen but you need to be positive about what your response is going to be. So you can control that. Remember that it's your life and it's within your power to change it. If you're afraid that you might get downsized, then take control and act. Be proactive instead of reactive. And while there's a lot of unknowns as to what is to come, we can still do and, and provide us a foundation of success for our own symptoms. And our symptoms is what we are feeling inward. So that's loss of self-esteem, our own anxiety, even some physical um, health can be impacted. Trust that you will be okay no matter what. It is also during this time that we want to adjust beliefs about our identity. Because some of us might have been in, in our very specific roles for some time, we identify our true sense of self based on our work based on our relationships that we've established within our work environment. And this has completely changed that because it has shifted what that work environment looks like. So you need to really identify who you are and who you want to be during this particular time. It's an opportunity to show your value. So even if you face uncertainty in the field, make sure you give value to those that you do have a direct relationship with. When times are tough, it's not about doing the minimum. It's about establishing very strong personal boundaries and don't be afraid to assert yourself, but also act and identify what that looks like for you in your role currently. You wanna stay current, you wanna market yourself, you wanna keep your profile up to date, and you want to save money. Now, again, I'm simply speaking of all of these different aspects because of the unknown with regards to the impact of this that's going to have long term. And those uncertainties can definitely be unconsciously part of the stressors that we are facing right now. So identify what that possibility is, identify what that worry is, and just come up with an action plan to lessen the control that it has over your day to day. You want to stay connected. And now, obviously, with the social distancing or the physical distancing and us transitioning from that 
um, in-person type of environment to a non-existent <laughs> isolated environment, that's a very difficult thing for us to transition to. However, technology is on our side. And it's a matter of identifying those different mediums that are accessible to you to reconnect with colleagues. It's also a great opportunity to reconnect with some of those agents, reconnect with other um, individuals that you would have crossed paths with in your day-to-day -day routine. You're just modifying what that routine looks like in a different way. You can be creative. There are opportunities in order to lessen people's struggle with what am I to do now? What is to come later? Well, let's deal with the here and now. And the here and now is let's try to connect over Skype. Let's try to connect over GoToMeeting. Let's try to connect over Zoom so we can come up with a realistic plan for both. Helping others is also something that can contribute to lessening our fear and uncertainty around this time uh, when we're able to give people support with regards to their own worries and their own fears, it does take away from the intensity of our own experiences. We are also encouraging you to engage in intentional self-care. And I'm highlighting and stressing the term intentional. This is about actively being mindful in taking care of your body and mind. Part of that is having some self-compassion and also some empathy the self-compassion with regards to how you yourself might be reacting to the current situation and the unknowns that have been plotted into our laps or into the laps of others, have a bit of compassion and forgiveness as to that struggle that we're all experiencing and that we're all reacting a little differently towards. Maintain as much of a routine. Now, obviously, that could be difficult depending on, again, that work-life balance that we're talking about and having other people at home um, that can sort of impact your ability to maintain as much of a routine as possible. It is now establishing a different routine. You're familiar with one way of doing things. We're now asking you, based on situations, to change that way of, of adapting to a, norm, a new normal. And what that looks like is, you know, how do I increase the ongoing and identify new ways of working and recalibrating relationships? That's really what it is. You're just establishing and introducing new parameters, new boundaries, as well as new connections in a more remote fashion. Some people on a day to day work remotely. And it's just a matter of shifting gears in establishing that we can still be connected um, in a way that does add value. It's establishing what that individual routine is going to be and having others as comfortable um, with it. But it's a time of resilience and perseverance. And everybody's timeline with achieving that level of resiliency is going to be different. So we need to be very empathetic. Um, to other people's timeframes and their adjustment periods. So while we're trying to maintain a work-life balance, um, here's some quick tips that not only can you share with others, um, but you yourself can follow. And that's about having a dedicated workspace. You know, our work environments and going into schools or going into the office was an escape for some of us. It was sort of leaving work home at home and, and having ourselves clear of all of those responsibilities and really dedicating us uninterrupted to our work responsibilities. And here we're not faced with that same luxury. So we need to be a little bit more forgiving that there is going to be a clash. There is going to be a collide at times with regards to what we want to achieve versus what we can achieve. So start early. Pretend that you're going into the office as much as you can and structure your day. So what do you want to get done? And part of that is going to be filtering in all of those other roles that you have. Parenting, now being a teacher for your own children while still supporting your students, while still supporting your colleagues and while still supporting homestay families. Those are a lot of hats that you're going that you are expected to wear right now. And while no hat is more important than the other, it is the one thing that I'm stressing today that is the utmost importance, and that is your mental well-being and balance. 
if you need to shut the phone off to handle family life before your work life, then that is what you need to do. Because if you are to still maintaining that high level of stress and anxiety for a longer period of time than needed, you're not going to be per- you're not going to be good for anybody. And that is the honest truth. We need to really treat ourselves and take care of ourselves in the way that we would an expensive car. Regular, you know, expensive cars are regularly serviced. They they are kept in good shape because we see the financial value that we've in that we've, you know, put into it to purchase it. Well, now it's your time. Um, and everything else and everyone else's expectations need to be better managed in order to keep your mental well-being in higher priority over anything else. I'm mindful for time, so I do want to get through a few more slides before opening the floor to questions. So part of, you know, managing the new normal is to establish new expectations. And those expectations really do shape your reality. They shape your perception. They shape the perception that others are going to have of the situation. And it can be very difficult to let go of the idea that expecting something to happen will make it happen. Human beings have a natural tendency to pin their hopes for happiness on fulfilling expectations. Um, Well, there are very few things in life that you can control. And other people's reactions and how they treat you, um, how an event will turn out, are amongst those things that you can't control. So when you're establishing new expectations, not only are you establishing them for your home world, um, you're establishing them for yourself, for your colleagues, but you're also establishing them for other individuals that you interact with on various levels of what your role is. So be very clear in what you communicate. State what your expectation is. Decide where you need to set expectations. Maybe it's about time of day or how quickly you respond to emails or even some of the answers that people are expecting you to have. Communicating what's working. Affirm what's working. There are things from what we've become familiar with to what we have to adjust to that we can actually adopt and bring into our new normal. But it's important not to expect similar performance or similar feedback. We need to understand the why behind setting new expectations. And that's really providing others with the context and justification um, that expectations will need to be changed in order to meet the demands. And not only is it the demand of, of your role, demand of family life, but their demand as well of you. We are all in this together. We've all experienced disruption. So we need to really leverage the relationships that we have and establish the uh, empathetic pathway that we are all needing to shift routines. And that includes our families. So that will be collaborating those expectations. Look at the routines and workloads. How does it impact the current situation? And be open to feedback. Um, from others, especially from those in your home that might be there with you, including young children. What do they need? Their routines have been totally thrown um, off kilter as well and disruptive. So there's going to be priorities and needs from their perspective that you need to take into consideration as well. There's also the importance of gaining agreement and commitment to what to fulfilling those expectations. The other aspect to lack of clearly understanding expectations being a contributing factor to a lot of strife um, and uncomfortability in relationships that does cause conflict, um, and it's the beginning of poor organizational performance, is the lack of boundaries or not maintaining healthy boundaries. Now, I'm not going to speak at great length with regards to this screen, and though it's really important to identify some key aspects on this screen with regards to what are boundaries. And boundaries are emotional and physical space between you and another person. It is a matter of clearly defined limits, um, so you are free to be yourself. And right now, all aspects of who you are as an individual are all under one roof and are all clashing. So it's important that you yourself do not have restrictions placed by how someone else is acting, feeling, or thinking. So when you establish those clear expectations, you are maintaining those very specific and necessary 
healthy boundaries. Some simple tips that you can share with students and homestay families um, in order for them to boost their own coping during this time and, and their overall mental well-being is know your limits. So pay attention and encourage them to pay attention to their stress levels. Um, knowing what their coping mechanisms are and, and how they need to be best supported. Limiting consumption of news. So staying informed and though limiting it to times of day um, or even through reliable sources as a means of, of filling in some of those blanks that you might need answers towards. Find ways to spend your time. So again, going into the office and, and sort of that travel time and interactions with others and meetings and all of that kind of stuff was very much familiar to us in a different environment. And while we can't necessarily change some of that routine, specifically as it adheres to our roles, what we can do is lay it out differently in a new established routine. Um, taking breaks, taking care of your body, keeping your mind stimulated, practicing intentional self-care, connecting with others in, again, a very creative way. And connecting with others is a means of maintaining healthy relationships and building a strong support system. The one thing that we know that a lot of students have shared and a lot of homestay families have shared is they just want to be heard. It's not about taking action. So when we are listening to these families, listening to our students, listening to our colleagues, it's about listening to understand and not to reply. Sometimes it doesn't need a response, a reply. It just needs someone to hear and listen to as a means of a response given. I've encouraged you all to not only yourselves be informed by accurate information with regards to the COVID-19 situation, but encourage others to do the same. So here are a few websites that are available to you that can provide you the most recent and accurate information on the COVID-19 situation as a whole over the, over the um, frankly, across the world. And then more importantly, that's important to today's purpose as well, is additional resources that are available for support with regards to mental health and well-being support. So there's local hotlines and distress lines that are available. Um, I've included three free apps for your own reference, and that's the What's Up app, the MindShift, and SAM. And so they're very much mental health driven, as well as anxiety related management skills. Um, there's the body scan meditation. For those that are in BC, um, there is the COVID-19 BC support app and self-assessment tool if, if you are concerned or other are concerned with regards to symptoms. Um, there's Maple is also um, advertising some, some free resources with regards to those physical aspects. Um, as employees, identifying if you have access to an employee and family assistance program. Um, and what that will tend to offer is mental health support for you and your family, but it's important to identify what you have in place. And then for those that work within school boards or other educational institutions, um, for your students and sort of having a support available to them, some of your schools um, will have the Keep Me Safe program available to the students. And this is a 24 hour, seven days a week, immediate access to a counseling network, both through telephone and chat, for eligible students. And when we say eligible, it really determines um, the student body that that particular school has agreed to offer the program to. So if you do have questions with regards to that, do um, ask some of your colleagues or you can email inquiries at Keep Me Safe to find out if you do have the program for your students um, or ways to actually bring the program to your students during this time. I want to take this time before we open up to questions with regards to thanking all of you in joining us today. Um, and I encourage us again to try a very intentional perspective shift. Instead of seeing social distancing as travel bans, as panic, let's try to see them as acts of mass cooperation intended to protect the collective whole. This plan is not about individuals going into hiding. It's a global deep breath. It's that pause, if you will. It's an agreement between humans around the planet to just be still. 
He still in hopes that the biggest wave can pass without engulfing too many of the vulnerable among us. We are in this together. Some change is needed during this unique time, and that's a given. It is unclear to us that collectively the efforts of provinces, territories, education associations, and institutions, as well as each of us individually, can put Canada's educational system back on the path of moving forward and looking forward to new opportunities. And with that, I'd like to thank you. Um, if you want to contact me, I've left you with my email address, and though we will definitely um, make that available to you again through the recording of this webinar, as well as the PowerPoint in the handout but I'm gonna pass it off to my colleague and open the floor to any questions that individuals might have. So if you have questions, please use the chat um, or raise your hand using your control panel. Thanks so much, Christina. Um, we're in this together, as you said, and uh, I guess, you know, we're all navigating the new technologies as I am, um, hosting this with Christina. I just learned that uh, when you joined a GoToWebinar or hosting it as a panelist, you actually don't have access to the questions. Um, so I'm gonna um, turn it back to Christina to see if we have received any questions. And again, as a reminder, please feel free to type any questions you have in the um, chat box at the bottom. And as it stands now, we don't have um, any questions and that's okay. No worries, I'm mindful of people's time. So I do hope that individuals have gained some sort of clarity with regards to effective and simple tips and strategies that they themselves can apply um, or even how they can be applied to other relationships um, that you are trying to manage. Thank you very much, Marlene. So for those that are interested in sharing this presentation with even outside individuals that have not been present um, during today's webinar, I'm more than comfortable with you sharing that. As I said, in the handouts tab within your control panel, you will see um, the PowerPoint of today's presentation as well as the mental health self-care wheel, which provides different ideas of intentional self-care. So please do share if you need to and if you feel that it be important and valuable to others. So we are at 12.03 and we want to be mindful of uh, people's time and going for lunch. Um, maybe we'll give two more minutes and we go until uh, 12.05 and feel free to answer, um, sorry, ask any questions. And also, uh, as I mentioned at the very beginning, we will be sharing um, the recording as well. Uh, after this webinar, you will be receiving an email uh, with the link. Um, so feel free to share with your coworkers as well where you see need. Okay, as we um, are receiving uh, very kind feedback, thank you so much again for attending our webinar today. And thank you, Christina, again for joining us uh, from Toronto. Um, enjoy the rest of your day and make sure you check uh, our website, which is the list on um, the last page of the webinar. Uh, we have a few more um, events coming up in this week as well. Thank you, have a nice day. Thank you so much, everyone. Stay healthy and safe, all the best.